Hey there and welcome back. In this video we're going to be applying the surfacing to our little Fruit Bites candies that we placed into the container in the previous video. So let's open up that scene, the package O3B. We can open up a quick preview here just to see where we're at with this scene. All right, so we have the canister there all laid out. So let's look at this from the angle that the camera is going to be seeing this. So just temporarily, I'm going to disable this packaging just so we can focus on the Fruit Bites candy pieces. So I'm going to open up my preview again here. So we're going to go into our shader tree and we've already applied a material to these. So I think the number one thing that we want to do is there's four different candy flavors. So we want to have four different colors here and we didn't make four separate little elements when we started out, but we can apply uh, random variations to these fruit pieces here or these little candy pieces uh, using a shading trick. So that is under the processing and the variation texture. So basically what the variation texture does is it allows us to take a variation source and then it randomly applies these settings to those sources based on that input value. So if you had particles for a particle simulation, um, mesh parts, for this particular one we're going to be using items because each one of these instances is a separate item. So it's going to be randomly assigning the value to one of these items. So And then we have this set as the diffuse color. And then we also want to go in and set create an instance. And in the instance, we're going to set that to subsurface color. So make sure we set that to subsurface color. So when we change one, since this is an instance, it's always going to be referencing back to that original image. So let's go in here and open an editor so we can get a bigger view of what we want to do. So now we want to break this into four colors. So, and it's always between 0 and 1 or 0 and 100%. So I'm just going to, for good measure, set that in at 50%. So now more than half of them are going to be black. And then the other ones are going to be various shades of white to gray. Because it's attenuating. If we were to put that to 100, then we'd have more, more of the gray ones. But we want to set this into the candy colors. So I think we can put the input here, 75 and then I'm going to give this a red color. So I think the red one is going to be the strawberry candies. And then we're going to select this one here. And this one's going to be the lemon candies. We're going to make that yellow. And you see we're getting this variation between yellow and orange. And we don't want that. We want it to be only yellow or orange. So we're going to assign this stepped function here that will step that. And then we can add in other keys with this one. So this one is going to be, we have orange, for the orange candy. Make that one stepped as well. And then this one is going to be the dark cherry color. And that one also will be stepped. So if we zoom in here on this a little bit. So I'm breaking this into four different flavors. So I'm going from 0 to 25, 25 to 50. And then at 75 for that, this one should be 25. All right. We can go in and tweak some of these colors, just make sure that we're really happy with them. All right, so now that we have our colors set up for the various flavors, I think we want this to look a little bit more candy-like on this. So let's adjust our specular some more. Maybe put this up to 12 on that. These usually have a fairly hard sort of canuba wax or candy coating with carnauba wax in it, which creates a pretty shiny 
coat on the outside of these pieces. We can lower that roughness maybe a little bit. And then I want to go in here and I want to sort of crank up the subsurface scattering on those. It kind of gives it more of a gum-like sort of look to it. So these things are 45 millimeters thick. So I think we could go with maybe 20 millimeters as a maximum thickness. So that way they look more like they have candy in them, but they still have that sort of glowing, almost waxy sort of feeling to them. I think I'm going to boost the diffuse amount up to 100, just to brighten those up a little bit. All right, now the last thing I think I want to do for these candies is I want to give them some some bumpiness to them to make them look like they're manufactured. If you look at candy pieces, they're all very slightly irregular. They have little bumpy surfaces on them, despite being shiny. We don't want this to be a perfect mirrored surface on these. So let's go in and add in a noise texture. And we're going to set this as displacement. So let's go into surface shading displacement and assign that. Now right away we can see that it's looking way too bumpy right now. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to go into the material and we're going to dial that way back maybe to two millimeters. And also I want to increase the size. I don't want it to be so quite so crumbly looking. So let's go into the noise texture locator maybe give this 70 millimeters and then I also want to go into the texture itself select that and I change the frequencies so usually when you increase the frequencies that gives it more detail and reducing the frequency we're gonna get rid of some of that sort of finer detail and it's just gonna be like a minor undulation So maybe we can boost that displacement a little bit more. That seems to be adding just sort of that minor sort of variation in there. All right, we can let that sort of bake here for a second. I will uh, pause it, and then we'll come back to this in just a second. All right, so I let this bake for about another two minutes, and it's cleaned up really nice. We got this really nice highlights on here. It looks a little bit bumpy. It looks a little bit waxy and shiny. So I think we got that candy look that we want on this. I think that's looking really good. So what we're going to do is close this. Now we're going to start setting up a scene. And we're going to use this sort of as part of the presentation. This is going to be sort of the, the piece that's going to show what the product would look like, you know, on a shelf. So let us close up the shader tree here. And if you want to automatically close all the windows, if you hold down shift when you toggle any one of these little arrows, like if I hold down shift and open it, you'll see it opens up all of them. And if I hold down shift and close it, then the next time you open it without holding down shift, you can see they're all closed. So that's just a quick little trick for cleaning up your shader tree. If you have a bunch of folders all open up and you don't want to have to go through and click through each one of them individually. Okay, so let's go to our packaging and turn the packaging back on. Now, I think one of the important things when you're rendering out a scene, so far we've been kind of using HDR images as a crutch sort of to add some, you know, so-called realism into our scene. But I think what I really want to do is I want to have 
a, a stage with to put our object on and we're going to use better lighting rather than trying to use HDR images uh, in that sense. So I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to press in to create a new object. We'll put this underneath our package and we're just going to put a big box inside of here. So let's click toward the center and create a box, maybe about 16 meters wide. And then we also want to make sure that the center position on that is zero, but I want it resting on the ground. So I'm going to make the Y half up of the 16. So that'll put that bottom right on the ground for us. So drop that tool and I had four subdivisions. So then we're going to delete these front facing panels here. So if you select opposing corners and hit shift G, it'll select all of those the entire surface for you shift G and then shift G and delete now I'm gonna flip those other polygons inside and then I have to hit shift tab so it basically gives me a quick little cyclorama wall here on this and then I'm going to select my light and let's jump into a layout here that's gonna easily show us all of our extra elements so if I control tab I think I can go into the layout here and then now we can select our light make sure we're in items mode press 5 and then we're using a directional light this is the default light in any scene and I want to use area lights this is going to be more of like a studio type setup so let's convert that change type to an area light on that and we're going to move that back so it's kind of this is we're going to do a quick little two point lighting on this guy. And this is going to be my main key light. And I think we can zoom in here and grab that light again. And while it's active with any of the transform tools, you get these extra little handles when advanced handles is turned on. And you can increase the size of that interactively. All right, and then we're going to turn on our action center to origin. And I'm going to control D, clone that light. And now just rotate that around to the other side. And then we're going to get our none. And rotate that again directing it toward our our element that we want it to light so like I said we don't want to use that environment image anymore so I'm going to disable that now let's open up our preview and see how things are looking now I like to ro rotate the lights around the origin. So if you have them pointing towards your object, you can change your action center to origin and then just rotate those around. And it kind of gives you the ability to control the highlight. So I want that highlight to be a little bit higher on that element. And I think I want this light to be a little further over to the side. So we're just sort of going in and placing our highlights. We can adjust the position of this. And one of the dead giveaways often in CG art is these very even shaped specular highlights. So what I want to do is I want to add a gradient into the light that's going to control the color of it and make it more of a round light. And we can vary the color across that surface. So by selecting our key light and going in here and I'm going to add processing gradient. Now I want to apply the gradient over the surface of the light itself. So what I'm going to do here, we go into our items list and we turn back on our texture group 
you can see our gradient. Take that out of the texture group. Hide that again. We want to position this gradient locator at the center of this light. We can do that really easily by using uh, parenting, but we don't want to parent in place the default. So we want to hold down the control key and then drag that over the top of that key light. And then it jumps it so that it's at the exact same position where the light is. So now we can apply a gradient based on the size of that light. So let's go into our gradient. So that's set as the light color. Let's select our light again. And that should tell us it's 2.82 by 3.4 across. So basically like three meters. So we're going to have our input parameter on this light is going to be a sample parameter. That's going to be distance to locator. And we're adjusting the light color. So let's open up our editor here. It's basically about 1.5 meters over here. We want to have that kind of go to a black color to fade off, maybe not all the way to black, just sort of dim out a little bit. And then somewhere in here, it's going to turn slightly yellow. And then we'll have the bright area in the center of the light. So let's open up that preview again and see if that's giving us a nice result. Yeah, I think that's definitely sort of softened up that highlight a little bit. We can even increase the brightness on the light now that it's not getting the same continuous brightness across the entire surface. So maybe we'll increase this to 12. No, that's too bright. I think we could also reduce the specularity in this plastic of this lid here. Let me adjust some of these surfaces. I want to get rid of my cello pack right here so I know better what I'm doing. So sometimes it's a give and take between surfacing for your materials and adjusting the lighting. So I definitely want to get a little more light against this background. See, we have some of our surfaces are pushing through now with that bumpiness. I did not notice that until this very moment. So that is very easy to fix. So we want to have that texture push in instead of pushing all the way out for that displacement. So let us take this and we will set our high value at 50 and our low value to negative 50. So now we're getting the same amount of displacement. We've just moved it inwards and outwards. So now we're not having that penetration that was making that so obvious in the shading error. All right, back to the task at hand. So we're going to take care of this specularity here on this lid. So let's right click on there and select that material. So here's our cap material. We have speculars at 25. I think we could safely bring that down to four or eight. <clears throat> Maybe four. And that will allow us to increase the brightness on our key light back to 12. And I think we're getting this little line here. And that's from the depth of the subsurface. So let us jump in there and reduce that. Yeah, that looks better. We had too much scattering inside of that lid. And also, I'm not really buying this little bump map back here. It's not really giving me that detail that is that's con very convincing. So I'm going to convert this to a displacement map. You'll see right away it pushes outward. And that was a detail that I wanted to be an indentation into this. It also is way too strong. So let's go into this material and we're going to change the displacement to maybe four millimeters. And then I'm going to take that displacement image and where I have the low and the high value, I have the low at zero. I'm going to change the high to a negative 100 because I want that to be pushing it inward. 
will be precisely what it's going to do. Let's take a look at that. Yeah. So I find that to be a much more convincing detail when it's displaced rather than using the bump map that we had previously. All right, so let's look at this down here, our base underneath. And I think this is also suffering from too much specular reflection on there. And let's turn up our transparency. I want it to look like there's a little bit of something between the viewer and the, the stuff inside of the package, but we don't want to obscure it either. We want people to see the material that's inside of there. So one of the effects that I think would be really convincing on this is if we take this refraction roughness value and we could boost that to maybe two to 4%. Uh, and then it makes it so that it's a little bit of a milky looking plastic on that. And things that are further away from the surface have a tendency to start to blur out, kind of like frosted glass sort of look. But that requires an intense number of rays in order to smooth out all the noise. So I think for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to skip that. But if that's an avenue you wish to explore, some very small values in the refraction roughness, I think could add some real interesting believability to this of being a manufactured material. So let me turn back on my cellophane layer. Let's see about wrapping this up, see if we're happy with the way that this is looking. So I think the cello layer is suffering from the same issue. in here so we can reduce the specular on that from 15 to maybe three and there's also this problem of this sort of light gray shadow underneath the fruit and i think i tried to fix that in an earlier video by changing this material to black and i think i just changed the wrong one it's really blending with the background shade of the color that's this transparent part. So it's a little hard to sort of wrap your mind around that. But I, if I change this to solid black, then we get that shadow look in the way that we want that to look. So now it's blending with that background color properly and giving us the proper results. So now that we've put these layers on, we're kind of losing the specular highlight on those candies inside. And I think the problem is is now they're relying on the global illumination. So if we take these, both of these elements, no, select the two lights, let's go to the item list. So select the two lights, and if we go here to visible, turn on all the visibility options, then they will show up in reflections, sort of like their giant bounce cards. And let's reset preview again on that. You know what, we're going to go in here, we're going to save our scene. So file, save as, we're going to go into video 14. And I'm going to save this as package 04. Just overwrite my little test scene that I had there. So let's open up preview again. Take another look. A lot of this is just sort of tweaking some of the surfacing parameters and adjusting your lights. Maybe you want to change the position of them, change the highlight. Uh, you can go around and adjust the brightness on those to be stronger uh, if you wanted. You know. So feel free to continue tweaking on this setting until you get a result that you're happy with. 
But I think for now, we're going to call this result complete. Uh, we've generated a pretty convincing package here. So I think this was going to work for the purposes of our tutorial. So in this video, we applied the variations texture so we can get the different surfacing uh, on our candies. And we put a little bit of a displacement on there. And then we went back and we added in a little uh, cyclorama wall on here. And then we adjusted our surfaces here to sort of give us a bit more of a, a realistic result over what we initially had. I think we want to rotate this a little bit more so that we get the front of the candy package and not so much the side of it. I don't think the nutritious facts, nutrition facts are all that important. So anyways, we can let that bake for a little while and adjust your camera angle. So up next in the next video, we're going to start working towards creating our print ad, the bursting with flavor image that's going to be part of the the presentation as well so we're going to be reusing these fruit assets and then we're going to be featuring this package as we've generated it here so that will be coming up in the next video